Now the big warmonger of this world has got to be Carthage right now. She's being denounced by a lot of people. She's taken over a bunch of cities and she just declared war on Thebes. And she's trying to take over the last two remaining cities of Egypt. This might be really, really big because Carthage has a extremely large military compared to the Egyptian military. I don't know exactly if, if Ramses is going to be able to defend himself here. If Egypt loses Thebes to Dido, this could send a massive ripple effect throughout this world. I, I, I don't even know where to begin. This would be such a huge, huge loss of a capital. Because, I mean, for one, it's got to be one of the biggest cities we have in this game so far. It'd be one of the, I think, one of the biggest exchanges uh, that's happened yet, where with a population of 14 cities, or I'm sorry, a population of 14 people, citizens within Thebes, would go down. Obviously, you know, if, if it were to exchange into Carthage's hands, uh, it would probably go down to about seven population, but it doesn't matter. I mean, you're talking about other cities like Athens wasn't very big beforehand. We had a very small Portugal, which, you know, just got taken over. A lot of very minor cities. Thebes is a big city to take. Now, you know, luckily for, I guess, the rest of the world's sake, is Egypt doesn't have control over as many wonders as you would expect. They only have one, and that's the Terracotta, and that's the terracotta Army. Uh, that will, you know, come to no use for Dido and the Carthaginian Empire. But, you gotta think, will a coalition be formed after, or if Thebes takes over, if it gets taken over? It could be, it could be a thing. Uh, it, it really, I, I can't see Egypt stopping anybody here. I, I just can't see it happening. They they have you know a few Egyptian war chariots. They're kind of more protecting their their much weaker city. I I don't I don't think Carthage gives a crap about this city. They want they want the capital. They want Thebes. I'm afraid. I'm afraid for the rest of the world because we've got kind of I don't want to call Carthage an evil power here because I'm really loving them. It's they're making this game so exciting, but damn. In like kind of an evil way, I really love to watch Carthage. I'm really loving watching Carthage right now. This is going to be their th possibly third city that they take over. They've already made a landing inside of Europe, and there's really no civs around them that can stop them. They border very weak civs in Morocco, in Songhai, in Egypt, in Rome. In I mean, Spain is kind of powerful, but they're not ready yet. Not to take on Carthage, certainly not, because... You know, not only does Carthage have a massive land military, but they also have a huge navy and, and a huge fleet in both the Mediterranean as well as in the Atlantic Ocean. You know, I mean, it could be Carthage that, that eliminates Portugal from this game of Porto, even though I love little Porto right here. It's so cute. It's so cute. S-Q-U-T. So cute. It, I really hope that they do good. I'm, I am still rooting for Portugal because it's, I'm so glad that they were able to run away from Iberia and found a new city that they can still use to colonize. Um, but yeah, no one really can stop them. Maybe the Zulu, but that's about it. Ethiopia is going to kind of cut off the Zulu, so I don't know if there's going to be any sort of exchanges. So this should be exciting. Let's go ahead and watch this. This is not the only war that's going on. There are a few other wars, um, but we'll kind of keep our eye on that. Of course, the Ottomans and the Huns are still at war, and they're one of the big, the big two military powers going going at it. France has now denounced Carthage. We have India denouncing the Ottomans. So the the denouncements don't generally kind of they're not going towards like one specific. Oh shit! People aren't even trying to defend Egypt. They're now they're just they're wow. This is an evil world. This is an evil world. Now will Babylon come into play here? Can Babylon really kind of do something into play? Not really. They don't have much of a, of a navy that they can use and send over towards Thebes. Uh, I'm sorry, an army. Not, not necessarily a navy. Uh, they don't have much of an army. They don't have anything in Memphis, and they don't, they don't have anything just north of Thebes. Sunghai actually does have a pretty okay army, but and he actually might grab a hold of this much weaker Egyptian city. That doesn't matter, though. It, it's all whoever takes Thebes. It's the race for Thebes right now. That's what we're seeing. Um, okay, well, that's just messed up. This is just a cruel, cruel world. Egypt might get to, Egypt may, Egypt may get taken out very, very fast by turn 103. Uh, Babylon has denounced the Huns. We also have Ethiopia and Byzantium making a declaration of friendship. All right, so what happened here? Uh, Genghis Khan is secretly plotting against Korea. That's what we figured. Uh, I'm going to leave this by in there for a few, may, maybe I'll switch them around, and maybe, I'm going to go to Carthage. You know, Carthage is kind of the subject of this video. Um, they are the evil power in this world, practically. They are kind of the evil power, and I, I gotta say, I love them. I love them. Carthage is such an up-and-down sieve. I've, I've seen them play this route very many times in very many kind of uh, Earth map modes. 
They do tend to be very expansive in Northern Africa, but something ends up stopping them. Usually, almost every time, something ends up stopping them. And this might be a coalition, however, there's not anyone that really can stop them at the moment. It's going to be tough. Um, okay, so looks like they've split up their troops. Um, now, the good thing is, I mean, Thebes is easy to take. For an AI, there's nothing really to worry about. Yeah, they might, you know, take a few penalties attacking across the river, but that's not a big deal. Um, that's not a big deal at all. They've got a bunch of pikemen, and there's not much that's going to defend. An Egyptian catapult is not going to do much damage to units. Uh, they do, um, you know, obviously their, their, their thing is attacking cities. I don't, I think they get it, I don't know if they get a penalty for attacking units, or if they just don't get... I know that, you know, when they attack cities, it's like a 200% bonus for attacking cities, but I'm pretty sure catapults aren't going to do anything to units. Uh, the War Chariot could help. At least they have two more ranged units just behind Thebes, but I don't know exactly what's going to happen at this point. Oh, jeez. Uh, let's check in on the Ottoman War against the Huns. <clears throat> Again, I think it's just going to be, you know, a battle of two Goliaths. They're going to send units just straight at each other's faces, going to blow up each other, and I think that they're just going to eliminate both of their militaries. I don't think one specific civ is going to win uh, just up north here. India and Siam, a declaration of friendship. All right. All right. That's interesting. Even though uh, Siam has set, have settled down south in modern-day India, that hasn't seemed to stop them. Again, Mongolia. That is the wild card. When does Mongolia come to play here? Siam has denounced the Ottomans. Ethiopian Babylon made a declaration of friendship. Okay. So Babylon is... Babylon's playing a very good game so far. I'm really kind of happy about Babylon. All right, new wonder built by China. We've got Greece denouncing the Huns. Uh, we have oh, a peace deal between the Ottomans and the Ottomans, Russia, with the, uh, the Huns. With the Ottomans, uh, yeah, Russia and the Huns. Wow. I guess they've decided not to just destroy each other's units for no reason. I guess they decided not to do that. Oh, crap, and here they go for Thebes. What does this mean? Because a lot of people have stopped their denouncing of Carthage and they're focusing in on more like the Huns or the Ottomans. And then, you know, people are, you know, making declarations of friendships as well. That's another big thing. Wow. Damn, this is... So, this is big. The fact that they made peace is actually kind of a good thing. These are very uh, military-based civs. And if they would have lost both of their militaries um, by, you know, just sending it at each other and practically not getting any cities in return... You know, that would have been kind of a waste of a sieve, and they would be wasted space for someone like Poland to continue to blob out. We kind of need, if you're if you're rooting for anybody else in this game besides Poland, you kind of need to be rooting for uh, the, the Ottomans and the Huns, and you got to be kind of happy that they made peace, because they're not just going to sit here and waste their time going to war with each other. They'll probably figure out how to get bigger and stronger themselves and uh, maybe face Poland, because if you're, again, if you're rooting for somebody else besides Poland... Um, the Huns and the Ottomans have got to be your best friends because they're the two civs that could possibly stop uh, the Polish Empire. Okay, so yes, we've got a bunch of denouncements of the Huns and the Ottomans as well. Russia's denounced the Ottomans, which is weird because Russia and the Ottomans just joined in against the Huns. Weird. Weird. Or was that... Oh, wait a second. No, that was the Ottomans. Oh, okay, okay. So it looked like, I think it was the Huns and Russia that both declared war on the Ottomans. I, I'm not 100%, but they the Ottomans definitely got this on a peace deal. They did not take this. Yeah, they got this from a peace deal. Holy crap. So now Russia is down to one city. Jeez. Jeez, this map is going to be beautiful. You can already start to see it in the mini-map. You can already kind of start to see the progression of the way this is going to go, the colors. I mean, wow. It, I think it's going to really start looking good. Uh, Byzantium, still got a hold of their city, but I don't know for how much longer. I don't know for how much longer. And when is going to, I believe it's going to be Korea. Oh, Korea's made peace with Catherine, okay. So it looks like, looks like Russia's going to survive for a little bit longer. I really don't know how much longer, though. I doubt, I doubt much longer. They're down to one city, and, you know, they're surrounded by really expansive civs in, uh, in the Huns, as well as, as Poland, and then they have Mongolia as well. They can't forget about Mongolia and Korea. Even Korea is in Asia, uh, settling on northern Asian territory. Dang, there's a lot of units over here, and I'm wondering who... It, now, you know, do they set their sights on, on, on the Polish? It could be on the Polish Empire, or maybe Austria. Look how powerful Austria is. Wow. Look how freaking powerful Austria is. Although, Rome is powerful too. I mean, there's just, just so many units within all their territories. It's crazy. Um, the Celts are doing good. I think the Celts are still at war. I thought they were still at war with... Uh, with Sweden, but maybe not. 
that might be oh what the freak Arabia and Byzantium you what why why'd you do that Siam has publicly denounced the Huns everyone's denouncing the Huns what the hell that's weird dude you you were really close to taking that city I'm loving this Ottoman game though uh I I don't want to I don't want to get away from the oh wow Notre Dame for Solomon. Uh, so pretty much, the Ottomans are going to be able to expand for you know however much they want. They they probably have since they only have four cities currently. They probably already have a, a shit ton of happiness. But getting up the uh, the, I don't know. I'm not sure. So we have a college here in the U.S. I believe it's in Illinois, Notre Dame. But this is Notre Dame, I believe. Pretty sure that's how you're supposed to say it. Um, so confusing. I don't. I don't know why. I, maybe it's just my stupidity. But I'm just really confused all the time. Uh, but this is going to provide them. I think it was like ten extra happiness or something like that. So the Ottomans are going to be happy for the rest of the game. Because uh, you have to think. You know. Remember on deity, the the AI already gets a bonus to their happiness. So yeah. And I'm loving the way this the Ottomans are playing this game. Now they have four cities. It's not connected to their to their empire. But wow, good for them. They're really making the best of this start just by going to war and. And choosing the right places to to go after. Okay, so what happened here? Carthage uncovered that Dido is secretly plotting against Alexander. That doesn't really matter. I don't know why it showed me that. Egypt and Arabia have made a declaration of friendship. Okay, I don't know how long, how much longer that's going to last. So again, B Byzantium and the Arabian war. The, the Arabian war for Byzantium is over. Now let's watch Thebes as Thebes falls. More than likely, I think this is one of the only big wars that are happening currently right now. I don't think we're going to see anything else happen just yet. Okay, everyone's denouncing the Huns. I don't understand why. I mean, well, I kind of do, but at the same time, why aren't you denouncing Carthage? Now, you have to remember that not necessarily the entire world, wow. The world's, you know, all the world's has not discovered each other. So maybe that's one of the things. Like, I can tell you for sure, East Asia has not messed, met Carthage. That's maybe why we didn't see as many denouncements as we thought. Um... So yeah, that, that's definitely one thing. Also, I, I know they did this a while ago, but I didn't talk about it. Uh, the Zulu do have control over completely, oh, completely over Madagascar. And uh, all of South... Oh my gosh, look at all those empies. Look at those empies. And you only have one war to go towards, and that's that you got to go to war for Ethiopia. And you might as well do it now. Wow, Ethiopia has a lot of troops right here. What are they doing? It looks like they're about to attack somebody. It might be Egypt, to be honest. They might be seeing how weak Egypt is, and they might want to join in on that. All right, um, let's see here. So we've got a research agreement going on. Very nice. And that, yeah, that doesn't even matter. Anything else that's going on around through the world? I know that I've been kind of focusing on Africa within this video, uh, but there's other things that are going on. I don't know what Mongolia is doing. Uh, let's see how Indonesia is doing. Okay, they've got their, well, they had their third city. It's been a while, but I don't know who is going after Australia. A lot of people were discovering it. Oh, yeah, there are a lot of units out here. New Zealand. Hey, this hun this uh this ruin is still here. Alright. Where are you guys gonna go? I mean I have to imagine it's gotta be Japan or maybe Korea. Korea is very expansive. Korea might be thinking about going over that way as well. How big we've got Delhi at thirteen. I I imagine that Songhai still controls, yeah, the world's largest populated city. No, actually it went to now Morocco. And it's it's Morocco's second city. Morocco's second city is now, I think, the most populated uh, city in this world at 17 citizens. It's, 100 and it's, it's 175 BC. That's pretty damn good. That's a pretty damn good size. I don't think, I don't think there's anywhere else that's even close to that. Uh, yeah, I mean, if India doesn't have it, then no one else is going to have it. All right, let's continue on. So uh, what happened to the Egyptians? Okay, the Egyptians have just fled. They totally just fled the protection of, of Thebes. Now, wait a second. Where are melee troops? Carthage, you're not going to be able to take over Thebes if you don't have any melee troops. Yeah, the knights, these knights could work, but, you know, they're going to get a penalty, and that's not the most efficient way of doing it. You better get your pikemen down there. Austria and Persia have now made friends. Yeah, you're attacking it. You're attacking it pretty hardcore, but I think Ethiopia is now going to declare war on Egypt. Someone might steal Thebes away. Someone could. If they don't have... If, if, if Carthage doesn't get their shit together... And get a melee unit down over here, just stat. Then someone like Babylon, or I, I think Ethiopia's got to, I think, also be considering going to war with Ramses. Since they see how weak but powerful their city locations are. Might be a thing. France and Austria have made a declaration of friendship. Okay, that's a big friendship. That's a big one, because Austria is strong. There are a few powers in Europe that, you know, we aren't talking about, because they're down to only two cities. But still, oh wow, Paris has 16 citizens. 
they are really close. They are really, really close to having the most populated city in the world currently. Wow. Yeah, but Austria is really strong, but they don't really have a, a good... They don't really have a specific civ that they can easily go to war with. Uh, Denmark has now denounced the Ottomans. We have Austria and Persia made a, made a declaration of friendship, as well as France and Austria. All right. So, Egypt is back, continuing to try to defend as best as they can. Um, I'm pretty sure they're African forest elephants. I, are those melee? I cannot remember if they're melee or ranged. They could be ranged. They definitely could be ranged. Uh-oh. There's a Babylonian horseman. There it goes. There it goes. Thebes have ju has just fallen to Carthage. That's what we thought. This will send, I'm pretty sure, huge ripple effects throughout this world. Whoa. Um, we also have... Wow, why is that? Zulu just declared war in Songhai. But the Zulu don't... How are they going to maneuver? It's going to be tough for the AI to do this. Well, they've got a, a few MPs. That's all that matters. Wow, that would be really interesting. If they take Janine and they take the capital... For the Zulu, that'd be amazing. Uh, India has now denounced Carthage. Okay, so there we go. There comes, there comes, becomes the, uh, the beginning, I think, of even more denouncements of Dido. Sweden has publicly denounced the Ottomans, and we have Sweden denouncing the Huns. Everyone's denouncing. So there's, there's, there's people that the world really doesn't like. It's the Ottomans. Uh, oh, okay, and the Carthage is done. So will Egypt get eliminated from this game? It probably won't happen now since Songhai and, and the Zulu are at war. Uh, unless, of course, e Ethiopia joins in. It might be, or you know what, Ethiopia might be the 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 good civ here and tries to take out the evil power of Carthage. Uh, the evil empire, the evil Carthaginian empire. I mean, I, it's, it's kind of hard to say that they're not. They are easily the most aggressive we've seen so far in this world, and I love it. And I freaking love it. Yeah, I think that's got to be it. I think Ethiopia's got to be taken out. Um, Ramses right here, out of the game. So in terms of score, we've got Korea at 455, we've got Ethiopia at 428, Gandhi at 415, and then all the way down at fourth place, uh, we have Shaka of the Zulu at 368. So uh, in terms of score, it's pretty much between three. It's uh, Korea, Ethiopia, and Gandhi. Or India, I guess. Okay, Gandhi's built up their own wonder. Songhai and France made a declaration of friendship. What's going on with France? There it goes. Oh my gosh, there it goes. France is going to colonize Canada. France, French Canada, is, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a thing. And nobody, I don't think anybody has the, is there any more settlers? So they're going to have a pretty good start here. France, France might completely control North America. Holy crap, France might completely control North America. Okay, so Egypt has now denounced Carthage. Carthage. That's not a big one. Uh, India denounced the Huns. So again, I think... Dido, once again, is going to be let off the hook for being... I mean, they now control... That's the second capital that they grabbed. They also have a former Songhai city that they grabbed away in the very beginning. Oh, shit. This world is getting so clustered. So many military, military units just all throughout here. And just the map is filling up so fast. I can't even begin to start to think about this. Okay, so it's 75 BC, turn 112. Now, what does Ethiopia do? This is where th just world, world relationships ships are just going to get crazy. So Spain has settled Barcelona. Wow. Okay. So actually, you know what? I'm wondering if this is going to maybe... Uh, does this mean that maybe Portugal and Spain are going to have a better chance of colonizing something like South America before someone like Morocco? Morocco only has one coastal city. That's a, that's a big thing. That is a big deal. Um, also, we could think about maybe the Zulu colonizing South America. That could be a good thing. Holy shit, you guys. This is crazy. I, I, jeez. And this isn't even the beginning. This is not even the beginning of it, I promise. This is, it, it's, it's only going to be more of a mindfuck as we continue to press through the next turn. It's, it's barely turn 100. Holy shit, there is so much going on. And who is going to be the first to Austri uh, Australia? Indonesia's got another settler up. Go for it, Indonesia. You know, you've, you've gotten off to a slow start, but I really think you can pick up the pace here. You've got very low populated cities, so you have quite a bit of happiness, I'm sure. Um, you know, kind of off your, you know, ready to go for your empire. I imagine you probably have at least double-digit happi happiness. 
And more than likely, I think they might be going for Australia, if not here, on this island here. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time.